it's Cheyenne with Wise Little Apothecary. Thank you so much for tuning in to our very first introduction video for our Herb of the Month Club. So this is for all members, free and paid. Um, I'm so excited to get started. So this started back in July, uh, at the beginning of July, and we've been starting to do one plant each month for throughout the year. So for July, we're studying plantain or plantago major. It is considered a pesky weed to some people, but actually one of my favorite greens, <laughs> so I quite enjoy it. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little introduction to how to identify the plant, a little bit what it's used for, a little bit how to use it, um, and the season it's good for. So we just want to get started with the leaves. So they grow um, basil, which means that they grow right on the ground at the base of the plant. So if you think about the word basil or basil, it sounds like it is at the base of the plant. So that is a really good way to remember these types of leaves. So they don't kind of come up the stalk of the plant at all, they stay on the ground. Another thing that's notable is that they are pretty oval shaped or egg shaped uh, or ovate. And they also have a very smooth margin or a smooth edge. And that is, uh, a pretty good way to spot it right off the bat. One of the things to make sure that you've got plantain is to look for these lines that come down the leaf and inside of those are actually really strong fibers. So if we turn it around you can see the lines on the back a lot better and these white lines down the back show you the different veins basically. So these are very strong fibers that are useful for a lot of things but are kind of annoying to chew if you're eating an older leaf like this. On a smaller leaf, like this, it is the same um, kind of plantain, except two different plants, two different stages of growth. So this one is grown up and has flowered already, and this one is actually just coming to life right now. So both of them, when you pick them, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but they have these tiny little strings that come out the end. Those are those fibers. So if you can isolate them, they can actually be useful for different sort of practical applications. I've heard of people temporary, temporarily uh, stitching up their clothing with it, uh, though once it dries it becomes brittle, so it's a very temporary stitch. Um, I've heard of people using it to suture up wounds, so as long as you have a very clean and sterile environment and you know what you're doing and have the right equipment, um, it can be used in suturing. And also you can make rope and cordage from it. It's very labor intensive, so it's gotta be something that uh, you really want to do or you don't really have an alternative. Um, or maybe a good project to get kids on. So you can kind of weave them into sort of a little tie. You can tie your hair back and things like that. So these fibers are useful. In the young, tender leaves, these can just be eaten fresh um, or raw. You can also put them into things like oils, butters, um, you can dry it, freeze it, all sorts of things like that. So in this form, it's a lot like spinach. You can cook it and use it however you would with spinach. When they're bigger and tougher like this, and they have these big fibers, there's a lot of different ways you can deal with it. So one, you can cut the whole leaf up into tiny little pieces so that you don't have to chew these fibers. It's a lot like chewing dental floss. It's just gets stuck in your teeth and things like that. So, or you can cook it. So once it's nice and wilted and um, steamed or fried with some butter and garlic and things like that, it softens up and is much easier to chew. Um, or some people recommend blanching it and freezing it and then cooking with it later like that. So there's lots of different ways to use these. I do cut these up and eat them fresh myself. Um, but you've got to kind of really cut it up into small pieces or you're chewing on these tough strings and it's not the most pleasant feeling. So that's the leaves. So the important thing is that they are basal, they grow at the base of the plant, they have an ovate shape, they have a smooth edge, a smooth margin, and they have these nice big fibers down the back that you can see, and you can see it down the front as well. Another thing is their flower stalks. So you can have big long ones like this or medium ones like this or little teeny ones that are like this. The cool thing about the big ones is that they will often poke up out of the snow as well. So 
as long as this is nice and brown and covered in seeds still, even if it's the middle of winter and you see these poking up through the snow, they're still edible, so you can still use them. Um, in fact, I've harvested plantain many times, including in the winter. Uh, when these seeds are nice and ripe, they will be brown instead of this green color. Either way, fresh, uh, unripened, and also fresh um, and dried ripe seeds are delicious. So when they're ripe, you can just pull your hand down like this with your nail and scrape off every single seed. But this one is not ready yet, so it's not going to let go of its seeds very easily. So you really got to kind of work at it. Um, once you get them out, you've got these kind of little seeds here and you can just eat them. Fresh is awesome. Um, I think this would be <laughs> Hypo. I think this would be very good in a um, like a dill and sour cream dip or um, uh, like a ranch salad dressing or different uh, oh maybe even yogurt granola things like that I would definitely toss them into a salad or salad dressing easy it's super delicious um, what we have here is actually the flowering plantain, so I'm not sure if the camera is picking up on it very well, but there's tiny little white sort of green little filaments almost that are hanging off of it, these little hairs, and those are the flowers. So they're very subdued and um, kind of simple looking if we were to compare it to something like a lily, let's say. So lilies are big and showy flowers. These are very tiny and simple and, you know, very reserved and that is its flower. So you can actually just eat this. Um, I, I kind of like it a little bit too much to eat it right now. This one is after it's been pollinated. So we can see the seeds are starting to form on there. It's a little bit more brown. Um, when these seeds are ready, they'll be a nice dark brown and just pop right off the stalk. And that is the best time to harvest them if you want to replant. So once these are nice and brown, then you can pull them all off and deposit them into scuffed up soil. So you could dump a whole bucket of it on a perfectly manicured lawn and you won't get any plantain. But if you've got, let's say a dog running through there, or a bike tire or lots of foot traffic, it will actually um, grow a whole trail of plantain. That's why it gets its nickname of white man's footsteps or people's footsteps. So that is all about plantain and how to identify it. So the key features are the big ovate basil leaves with the nice big fibers down the back or sometimes poking out the bottom. It is the nice big flower stalks that can poke up out of the snow and the grass and things like that. Playing will die. Uh, the flower stalks will be between 10 and 30 centimeters tall. So you can get the idea of how big they can poke out of the grass. So thank you so much for tuning in for that. If you have any questions or um, any feedback or anything like that, definitely let me know. This is our inaugural introductory video. So I would love to uh, have your feedback and obviously cater to you guys because this is all about all of us learning together. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day and get out there and explore.